Hey gang, I wanted to just go through some of the basics on the foundation grid with an example that might be a little easier for you to wrap your brains around because I know during class we just kind of dived into how you write the code for the grid, but it might be kind of confusing because if you don't actually see the background color on the columns, it's just this invisible grid that you have to think of conceptually, but it's sort of hard to figure out what foundation is actually doing behind the scenes. So I made this basic example for you, and I'm going to post this in our course site that might help clear a few things up. So all I did was I went to the foundation website at foundation.zurb.com, and I clicked the download everything button. Sorry, after I actually got here uh, from the home page, I clicked this download foundation 5 button and then I clicked download everything. That downloaded a zip package with the latest version of foundation. Then I unzipped it and in there I made a copy of their index.html file, the one that they give you out of the box, and I made a sort of simplified version of it to try to highlight a few important things that I think everybody needs to understand. So let's take a look. If we go over here to my grid example, you can see I've got a few different things here. First, I've got this box that has a 12 column section. So I created a row and then in there I told it, hey, on any size screen from big all the way down to really small, this should run the full 12 columns that are available in the foundation grid. Okay, but what does it look like if I tell foundation I want to use every single column in the grid as its own little box? Well, you can see an example of that down here at the very bottom of my example file. So here I did sort of the opposite. I said on small screens, each of these columns should actually be one full row. But on big screens, make each of these columns or on large screens make each of them just one column wide okay so here you can see the actual 12 column foundation grid in its smallest sort of like most granular form okay so here you can see I've got this text in here and each each one of these on a large screen gets its own little slot on the grid and I'm using the maximum number of columns that foundation supports which is 12 all the way from here over to here but then I told it on small screens I don't want all those columns side by side let's just make each of them take up the full width available okay so I've got some other examples here in between let's look at the code and see what this looks like so here's my HTML I've got just kind of standard head tag stuff up here then we jump into the body and I created a row. So remember, you always need to create a div with a class of row every time you create a new, new part of your grid, a new row in your grid with foundation. Then I went to work creating a class that starts with small-12 and then the word columns, and I also threw in the word panel. Now we didn't talk about this in class, but panel is something that comes built into foundation, and all it does is puts a gray background color and a little border on whatever div you apply it to, and it's handy here in this lesson because it'll show you the invisible boxes that foundation is creating for you. It'll make them visible. Okay, so this is just for the purposes of the lesson. You don't have to use the panel class in your own work if you don't want to. It's just a helpful way to see the boundaries of your div boxes. So here, because I'm just specifying small 12, remember everything gets inherited upward. So whatever I specify at the small level is going to cascade up to the medium and large and everything above that. Okay, so if you look over here in my browser, no matter how big or small my browser is, that first div box, that first gray box, it always takes up the full width that's available. Okay, that's the power of small-12. That's like saying, no matter what, you're always going to take up all those 12 columns available in the grid. I know this might be a little confusing because you have to think about the foundation columns as something a little different from the columns that you see visually in your layout. And I'll try to explain that a little more as we look at some of these other examples. Okay, so then I've got my paragraph in here, my closing div for the, uh, the columns panel thing up here, and then I've got this closing div here that closes the row that I started at the very top. Okay, 
So now this next example, I've got another row because I want this to sit on its own row below what came before. And now I've done something a little different. Here I said small 12, so again, if we're on a small screen, let the, the content inside of this div box take up the whole width available in my grid. But on medium sized screens and anything larger, because you can see here I don't specify anything for large, but it's going to be inherited from medium. On medium sized screens, I want this div box or the content inside of it to only take up half of the normal grid space. Okay, because 6 is half of 12. So I do that again down here before I close out my row. See, I've still got this row open. I've got another div, and it's got the same thing, small 12, but medium 6. And that means that this guy here is also going to only get half the available space when it has a little room on medium and larger screens. So let's go over here and just check that out. So this, these are the boxes that we just looked at in the code. Okay, you can see here they're sitting side by side. So right now the browser thinks we're on at least a medium screen or something bigger. But if I shrink it, watch for the jump. Uh, when's it going to? There we go. So there, now it knows that I'm on a smaller screen and it's giving me my small grid settings. So it knows that this box should get its own full width row in the grid and this guy gets on its own row. It runs the full width of the grid that's available. Okay? So let's look at the next one. Here we've got four columns setting for our grid. Now this is where it gets kind of confusing because you're saying, what, what do you mean four columns? You've actually got three columns worth of content here. I know that's kind of bizarre, but remember the foundation grid behind the scenes in our layout is actually 12 tiny little columns, like what we see down here when it's all sliced up and there's room for all 12 of them. So the foundation columns relate to that invisible 12 column grid that everything is being aligned to. So here when we say four columns, remember four is one third of 12. So when we create a four column div box in our foundation grid settings, we're actually telling it this should be a third of the total grid available because we have 12 columns to work with in our foundation grid. I hope that makes sense. Maybe as you play with it a little bit more, it'll become clearer. But basically there's what you visually see, uh, you know, in your in your browser here where you've got three boxes sitting side by side, but the math is actually based on a 12 column grid. So you have to think about things in like factors of 12 or divisions of the number 12 to figure out what it's actually going to look like. So if we look at our code for uh, these guys, we've got a new row. Then I made a div with a class of small four, and then I didn't set anything else because in this case, I just wanted to see what would happen if I didn't set any medium or large settings. And you can see that no matter how small the screen gets, these are always four columns or four columns in the grid. They're always taking up a third of the available space. Nothing forces them to stack the way the last example did. Okay, so whether we're big or small, they always stay like that because I only specified a small setting and that small setting it bubbles up to medium, large, and everything beyond that. Okay, so last example. This one might look a little scary and it's not very practical because it's pretty rare that you would actually set something to only take up one of the 12 columns in foundation because that's a very small column, but it's possible. So here you can see on a large screen, I get each of these boxes here, each of these div boxes, to be just one tiny little twelfth of the total space available. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, boom, taking up the whole space here, but with one little sliver in each thing. But as soon as we get down to something at the medium size, see that trigger, that breakpoint, medium or smaller, Based on my settings and foundation, I'm telling it, hey, now I need all the space I can get for this. Let's let them stretch all the way across. So what does that look like in our code? Well, it's a whole lot of div boxes. So first I start a new row, and then I've got 12 little divs here, and each of them have the same text inside, and the settings here are small 12, large 1. In other words, for small and Anything bigger than that, unless I specify otherwise, each of these 
each of these div boxes should take up the full width of the grid. So that means for small and for medium, even though we don't see that setting here, we're saying B12 grid columns wide. But when we get to large, I said, hey, 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 I have more space now. So let's make, uh, at the large size, let's make each of these div boxes only take up one slot in the grid, one column in my grid. And that's also going to bubble up. So anything beyond that, technically there's an extra large and I think even an XXL grid setting and foundation. So keep in mind, once I set this here, we can just stretch the browser all we want, and it's still going to inherit that large setting. Okay? So hopefully that clears up a bit of how the, the foundation grid works. And remember, if you want to put a panel class on something, that'll help you to see what sometimes might be kind of hard to visualize because normally you're not going to have borders between all your columns. And you also need to be thinking about the difference in what you set here with these, you know, variations on the number 12 for the foundation grid versus what you actually see here which might feel like say a three column layout because the number four is one third of 12. All right hope that helps uh, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the discussion board.